Hi, Dr. Pat here. We're looking at uh, input output models, and I've got yams and hams. This is a two sector problem because if I got yams and hams, if you had uh, something else, that would make it an additional sector. So we're just playing with two, two basic items, two basic goods. So just looking at two sector problem. In the previous video, we answered question number one. And so we have a production level of 100 units of yams, 70 units of pigs, and we found out how much was used up in the production process. So then the question becomes, how much is left over to meet the population's demand? And so let's answer that question. Uh, you may recall from uh, what we had was we have a production level of 170. So our first row here is all about yams. Our second row is about pigs. And so we had a production level of 100 yams and 70 pigs. But while growing those yams, we, the farmer ate some yams. And also while growing the pigs, pigs ate those yams. And so this 36.7 we calculated in the previous uh, video. And that represent how much yams was used up in order to produce these 100 yams and 70 pigs. And also in the production of these, we basically had 0.5 pigs used up in that production level. So if you take the difference of these two numbers of what we produce and then how much is used up in production, what we have is this amount that's left over and this amount that's left over is what we can use to meet the demand, the external demand, the demand of our economy or we can go out there and sell it to villages next door and those kind of things. And so that subtraction right there, the difference between the production level and how much is used up in production represents how much we have left over to meet the demand. So there's our answer to that second question. And now what I want to do is just take a moment and kind of expand this thing and see if we can make a nice little formula out of it so that we can just go straight and use the formulas. So when working this matrices, these three matrices of the production level, how much is used up in the demand and then um, how much is left over to meet the demand excuse me that middle one's how much is used up in production this middle matrix right here that was calculated because we used what we call the technology matrix or the input output matrix multiplied to the production level and that's how we calculated up here the amount that was used up in production and so just kind of putting that back in because we're going to work this uh, nice equation now is because you can see that we've got this 170, 100, you know, this matrix with 170 in it. And we also have that there. We can factor that matrix out. So let's factor this matrix out, this 170. And when we do that, what do we have left over? Well, we have this one matrix right here, which kind of makes sense. And factor that out. But now where did this matrix come from, you might be asking. Where did this diagonal here, the um, diagonal with uh, matrix with a diagonal of ones and then zeros everywhere else, you may recall that this is the identity matrix. And it's kind of like the special one. It's like one for us in regular numbers. And uh, so when we factor out anything, remember, you always have a one left over. So when we factor out a matrix, then we have not just a single number one but also the uh, ones and zeros for the identity matrix and so that's what we've got here and then in terms of a formula you, what we'll see is this is the identity matrix we'll call that I the technology matrix or the input output matrix we'll call A our production level we're gonna call X and then our demand we're gonna call D so this is the nice relationship that we have so if I want to calculate how much, how much I have left over to meet a demand for any production level I can use this calculation to do it and uh, for your calculator, you can actually get the identity matrix, we'll go to your um, matrix and then math, and you'll see it as the fifth item. And so that's how you can get your identity matrix. And that's what we've got going. So there's the relationship that I wanted to kind of demonstrate or to kind of bring out of the matrix that we've been using. And so we'll actually we'll use this uh, relationship, this equation in a different way. We're going to actually end up solving for X. So that's coming up in the next videos is how do we do this or how do we use this relationship to find the production level. So in this case, the next cases that we'll be playing with, we're going to be given the demand, then we're going to find the production level, kind of working backwards in that way. 
I'm hoping this is making sense. Talk to you later.